Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can come into your house, that we can worship and praise you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, that you sent your son to die for us, that we can have that life and that more abundantly. Father, we just thank you, Father, for the precious blood that was shed. We place that fresh covering of your blood upon us this morning, Lord. Open up our hearts, Father, for all that you have in store for us. Father, we just thank you, and we give you all praise, all glory, and all honor in Jesus' name. Amen. God is good, God is great, His faithfulness enters unto all generations. God is good, God is great, His faithfulness enters unto me. Oh, God is good, God is great, His faithfulness enters unto all generations. God is good. God is great, His faithfulness endures unto me. I will sing a new song to 
to the Lord. I will shout aloud to the God of my salvation. I will exalt his name, lift his name on high. He is worthy of my praise. I will open up my mouth and say, God is good. God is great. Oh, God is good. God is great. His faithfulness enters unto all generations. God is good. God is great. His faithfulness enters unto me. God is good. Oh, God is good. God is great. His faithfulness enters unto all generations. God is good. Faithfulness and there's unto me. God is good. Oh, God is good. God is great. Faithfulness and there's unto all generations. God is good. God is great. His faithfulness and there's unto me. His faithfulness. Oh, yes, his faithfulness and there's unto me. His faithfulness. Oh, his faithfulness and there's unto me. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad his faithfulness endures? Praise the Lord. Well, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. To sing praises unto his name. Oh, most high. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises. the Lord to sing praises unto his name almost high it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord to sing praises unto your name almost high it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord it is a good Thanks unto the Lord. 
Lord. Hallelujah. You're worthy of our praise. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. You alone are worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah. I will hide in the shelter of your love. Rest in the shadow of your wings. You are my fortress. You're my refuge, my strength. And you I am complete. Precious hiding place. Precious hiding place. I will rest beneath the shade. Shelter of your love, you stand by my side. Oh, you hold me in your arms. I hear your voice, and you gently call me to hide within your love. Precious shelter of your love rest in the shadow of your ways you are my fortress you're my refuge my strength in you i am shelter of your love you stand by my side you hold me in your arms i hear your voice you gently call me to hide within your love precious Yeah. 
shelter of your love. I will rest, I will rest beneath the shelter of your love. I will rest, I will rest beneath the shelter of your love. Oh, I will rest in your Lord, in the shelter of your love will I find my rest. Put all your trust, all your confidence in my word. It's time to stand on my word. For if you were standing, I would not tell you. But it is time to stand on my word. Stand on my word with all your heart. Put all your trust in the things that I have said unto you. Put all your confidence there. For truly, if you're watching and seeing, you understand and know the things that are taking place right now. The world is in a situation that they do not know how to get out. For they'll not turn to me, they'll not come to me, but they'll continue to go their worldly way. And therefore, great troubles Great troubles throughout all the world shall now take place. A great shaking shall come soon. A great shaking that will make the others look small. So press into the fullness of my word. Stand on my word. Stand on the promises of my word. Watch, look, listen. Understand what's going on around the world. For I have told you that before, but most ignore that. They do not look. They do not listen. Therefore, they know not the things that are taking place. But I say unto you, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Don't be one of those that will wake up one day to find others already gone. For truly, this is not a time to fear. This is not the time to be afraid. For truly, I have already made you the victors. I have made you the overcomers. But you must rise up. You must go forth in my strength and my power and my anointing. For truly, I am the one that shall carry you through. So therefore, I say, look unto me. Put all of your trust and confidence in me. For truly, I shall deliver you from these days and hours that are ahead. For truly, many troubling things are coming. Many things are coming. And sadly, some of my people will get caught up in them because they are not standing like I have called them to stand. They are not putting all of their trust and all of their confidence in me. But it does not have to be this way, saith the Lord. For truly, I have already made the way for you. If you would look to me and put all of your trust and confidence in me, you would, you would see how I can move on your behalf, saith the Lord.
So Lord, isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord tonight, today? Praise the Lord. We welcome you to the Father's house, Pastor Dennis. Praise the Lord. Good to see you. all of you today. Praise God. We're going to continue to worship the Lord in our giving today. Praise God. Two offerings, as always, tithes and offerings first, and our pastor's love offering uh, second. Thank you for your faithfulness. We do want to thank those that are out in Cyberland who uh, do send us gifts as well. We do appreciate that, and we thank you for that. And uh, we just, uh, what can I say? We're just thankful that for anything that God brings in our way and we uh, are just thanking God that we can use it for his honor and glory and uh, praise God father we thank you and praise you for the faithfulness of your people because your people are givers they are cheerful givers they love to give and father we know that you've promised blessings upon givers You've said, given it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. Father, we thank you that that promise is ours, as well as many others. So we ask your blessings upon gift and giver today, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.
All right. <clears throat> there is no ladies' Bible study this week, just because of the busy um, holiday week, <clears throat> Thanksgiving week, so no ladies' Bible study on Tuesday. However, we will have our th annual Thanksgiving service on Wednesday. There will be no Bible study, so this is a time when we ask people to come and uh, share their thanksgivings. Uh, they might share a poem or a song or a testimony of the goodness of God in their life. So you can be thinking about, um, about that. Those of you who don't always come on Wednesday night, this would be a good week to come and share the good things that God has done for you over the past year. So um, think about that, huh? Amen? Praise the Lord. Also Wednesday night, um, those of you who are coming, uh, you can bring a, um, a pie if you want, some finger foods. We'll, have, uh, we'll celebrate a little bit after the service just by eating and fellowshipping. And uh, so that's always a fun time. All right, that's this Wednesday. Wednesday. It seems like Thanksgiving has snuck up on us so fast this year. It just, I guess it does every year, but it just seems like faster this year for some reason. <clears throat> All right. Those of you who are involved in Christmas program practice and starting now for the next three weeks in or th the next three weeks in December, uh, they will be having uh, practice on Saturdays. I don't know if you're involved in that. If you have a child that's supposed to be in that, make sure they can come, all right? Praise the Lord. No fellowship dinner in December. Uh, however, there is a sign-up sheet for the Adult Progressive Supper. That's on the back of the, uh, the outside door there as you come in. And uh, so sign up if you're coming. If you want to be a um, host, for that, you see Sister Evans. Um, I don't know if she has any hosts yet or not lined up for that. We need, I think, five hosts to host that. If you have a home that's suitable to pack in 50 people or whatever. <laughs> All right, praise God. Isn't the Lord good? All right, my oh my. We just thank God for all he is doing. Praise the Lord. All right. I guess my wife is going to come and we're going to sing a song we've sang many times, but uh, we love it. It's some of our gospel favorites. Make sure you get close. <coughs> in God's word isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful isn't he wonderful 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 isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful eyes have seen ears have heard it's recorded in God's word isn't Jesus my Lord Wonderful, yes, he is wonderful, 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 isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, it's recorded in God's word, isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? There's within my heart a melody. 
Jesus whispers sweet and low, fear not, I am with thee, peace be still, in all of life's ebb and flow, Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Soon he's coming back to welcome me, far beyond the starry sky. I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown, I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. joy for my soul like the sea billows grow since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart lights of joy for my soul like the Billows grow since Jesus came into my heart. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, it's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Jesus, my Lord, wonderful. Glory. All right, it's time for Children's Church. The anxious, awaiting children can uh, depart with my daughter there <laughs> and son-in-law <laughs> and uh, have themselves a good time. Praise God. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. David, do you have some prayer requests? Yes, praise the Lord. And this morning I'm, I'm excited because uh, I think we have three new uh, people that we've heard from along with a couple more churches partnering up with us as members of our video church. Um, we have Brother Ba in Fiji. They have a small group of 49 and many of them need healings or miracles. Franco in Peru says they have 45 coming and most need miracles and some healings. The Martins in Spain said please pray for Alice and Ben as they have cancer and need a miracle. Mm. Elizabeth in England says 33 are coming and all need miracles and salvation. The Von Plotz in Germany will have 35 today for the video. Kimiko in Japan says they have 18 coming who need miracles and healings. Takish in Poland says we have 
12 coming who are unsaved and need a miracle from cancer. Tony in Italy says, please pray for Israel and their safety and pray for the 25 people who are coming for a healing or miracle. Frank in Romania says they have 35 who are coming for healings and miracles. <coughs> Luther in Germany says they have 35 coming for healings and miracles. Our friends from down under have 18 coming <coughs> with those who have RA, AIDS, cancer, and MS. Tukasha from Qatar. This is their first time coming. They're a small church of 132. One man is blind, many lame, and we have poor food and water. Then we have Ray from Bangladesh. They have over 120 coming for healings and miracles. They're holding a special outdoor service today. Kay from Oregon says they have 45 coming for healings and miracles. Amen. Glory. That's a lot, huh? I would say over 300. Well over 300. But we know that God is well able to meet all those needs. We have no doubt and we know that God's moving right now. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory. <clears throat> I've entitled this message today, I Need a True Worship Experience. Let me repeat that again. I need a true worship experience. And my text will be out of Isaiah, the sixth chapter, verse 1. And our church here understands worship. We love to worship. But does everybody, glory, there are three things that I'm not only convinced of, but I'm also disturbed about. And that is the misnomer, nomer, the misinterpretation, and the misinformation that are now in the kingdom world when it comes to Real worship. We've lost something somewhere. How people think that I just shout, holler, jump, dance. And that's not worship. Glory. It could be part of it, but it's not worship. There's a grave need in this day for understanding of what worship really means and what worship really is all about. Now, in this day and time of praise and worship music, in this day of the cutting-edge culture, we have so dipped into the culture of society and brought into the church that which society is pleased with, but God hates. God hates. It's not of God. And we see this. And it continues to grow. And the consequence is that we've become twisted and misformed about what true worship is. And we need to understand that. I think I really need to tell you that worship really has nothing to do with the music of a choir. Did you know that? Worship has nothing to do with how fast or slow a song is. It has nothing to do with the category of the music as long as it's biblical. Glory. Hallelujah. Worship has nothing to do with the denominations, the affiliations. It's not related to or boxed into certain types of churches. It's not. It has nothing to do with that or certain denominations. Worship is not branded only for a certain kind of people. Yeah, we do that. Glory. Worship is not simply for the unintelligent, the uneducated, or the less society-defined people. If we're honest with ourselves, worship really has nothing to do with our gathering in a building like we're gathered right now. This building can be used for other things. So it really doesn't have anything to do with worship. Glory. Worship is not an event. You know, some event that we worship, you know. Worship is an encounter. Can you say that? Worship is an encounter. Glory. I mean, a lot of people sing, and they love to sing, so they dance all around their house all day long, singing song. That is not worship. Glory. It could be. 
but it's not necessarily. You don't come to worship. You do worship. There's a big difference. And we may feel like we come to worship, and sometimes we probably do, but when we get here, we do worship. We do worship. Glory. You come to a building, but being in a building doesn't make it worship. Worship makes a building a sanctuary, regardless of whether it's your house, out in the barn, in your car, in church. True worship makes that place a sanctuary. Amen. Now, did you get that? Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because what makes worship is not this pulpit. It's not the organ. Yeah. It, it fills this room with beautiful sounds. It's not the piano. It's not the keyboard. It's not the other instruments. Because you could have a hoedown and have all those things. You could have rap and have all those things. But that's not worship. It's not the carpet on the floor. It, it, it's not all that we have in the sound room that makes it good. It's not. That's not worship. Glory. Because what makes worship is entering in to the presence of Almighty God. And if you don't enter into the presence of Almighty God, you really haven't had worship. Glory. I mean, our, our worship leader, she spends hours of time each week praying over the songs that God wants her to sing. Huh? I've seen people just bring the box and we've got a box and, oh, you know, we really didn't have worship because that's not worship. Remember, worship is supposed to take us into the presence of Almighty God to manifest the presence of Almighty God. And if we haven't manifested the presence of Almighty God, we haven't really worshiped. Now, you can do it at home. Don't get me wrong. You can. What makes worship is when I see the atmosphere in my spirit and I allow it to get properly arranged, then I can move into the presence of God. Glory. You see, when I come, I want to be in the presence of God. Glory. When we enter into the presence of God, it prepares us for the word that's going to be preached. Glory. If we've really entered in. Glory. Now, that's what makes real worship. Worship is not what you do on Sunday morning. It's not. Glory. Some places it is. Here it is. <laughs> Glory. Come with me to the book of Chronicles now. Now, the New Testament has a different slant. We'll get on that to worship. But here we go. Here, here's the whole key. The best key that you possibly can get. It's where Jehoshaphat is preparing to fight a battle. And the Bible says that when he gets the word, when he gets the word, when he gets the word from God, he got a word from God. Do you ever notice we get a word from God when true worship is moving? The prophetic glory. Oh, the devil will try to counterfeit it at times. And even here we've had that, sad to say. That's not what I'm talking about. Glory. Hallelujah. God is going against the enemies. Notice here. Notice, if you will, he gives them instructions. He said, put military people in front to fight the military people coming against them. He is giving them instructions to put the worship in front. The worship in front. Now, don't misunderstand this. Don't misunderstand this. Because the Bible says clearly that our weapons are not carnal. But they are strong to the pulling down of strongholds. That's 
true worship. It isn't, oh, I'm in a battle today. I'm going to sing a spiritual song and I'm going to win. No, you're not going to win because you didn't really worship. Glory. And it seems like we get so mixed up. But he suggests here, he suggests, now listen, he suggests that we put people in front who are trained in worship. Now that word there means that we're those that love the worship. We know that by worshiping, we're going to enter into the presence of God. And when we move in the presence of God, he's going to give us a word. He's going to manifest himself through the gifts of the Spirit. Glory. That's, that's why we're worshiping. We want to come into his presence. Like I said, it doesn't matter where you are. Why? Because our weapons of warfare, they're not carnal. They're not what the world does. We watch it on TV and sometimes they don't even know how to get close to God. You know, 90% or better of your TV programs on television today are all of the flesh. Glory. Somebody asked me, they, they give me a report on their husband and they do every week and he no longer has to take any chemo. They can't find any cancer anywhere. It shocked even the doctor because the doctor never figured it would go there. Glory. But that's where he is. And she said, do you watch Brother PTL? Used to be. I said, very seldom. Why? I said, because I've told you, all he does is sell things. Oh, he's got this speaker on. Excellent speaker. But all he does is sell things. Glory. He hasn't changed. When he lost PTL, that's what he was doing. That was why the government was able to, you know, to clamp down on him. Send him to prison. I wrote him while he was in prison. Glory. Yeah. And he's back out selling things. The reason that we need to have them train is worship is your frontline weapon in the battle against the enemy in your life. True worship. Not just singing songs now. I don't know about you, but I love to sing Christian songs. But I'm not always worshiping. But I've heard a lot of people that because they're singing Christian song, they think they're worshiping. Did they have any manifestation of the presence of Almighty God? Did he speak to them? Did the gifts of the Spirit come into operation? They haven't had true worship. We're talking about worship this morning. No, you don't fight the enemy with books, going to conferences, because you come to church, because you memorize a few scripture verses because you're wearing a cross around your neck because you have oil and a hanky in your purse but you fight the enemy when you learn how to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth that's what the New Testament says Glory. in spirit and in truth well, you know what that tells me? I'm not singing in my understanding. Because if I'm singing in spirit, it's got to be through the gifts of the spirit. Glory. The truth part is the English part. It's the Word of God because that's the only thing that is true. So if the song doesn't have anything about the Word of God, if it's not speaking about God, then it's not worship. I heard a good country western song the other day, but it wasn't quite good enough to say, Hey, Eugene, I bought another you know, gold mine here. Glory. It was good. It was about his daughter that he wanted her to grow up to marry a Christian. And he said, you've got to find a good old southern boy who goes to church 
every time the door is open. That good was a good part there, but the rest, you know, wasn't really about God. It was more about his daughter. Glory. So that wouldn't have been a worship song. A good song to sing, but not necessarily a worship song. Yeah. Are you following me? Glory. Hallelujah. You know something else? Worship also does something. Worship should be an effect and an after effect on your life. The after effect is on the enemy. It drives him off. He can't stand it. He doesn't want to stay where there's true worship. We've seen him run out. Yeah. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. We had one that the mother used to bring. When we really got worshiping, he ran out and sat in the car. Demons in him wouldn't let him stay in here. He had a goal. Had a goal. Glory. Can I be honest? I'm at the point where I want to see the glory of God every time that we enter here. I want to see his presence every time. Not just sometime, every time. I'm at the point where every time I get together with the saints, I'm not here to catch up on how your week has been. Glory. After church, I'll talk with you about your week. I'm not here, you know, to catch up on the week's news. I'm not here to talk about hunting and fishing and all that other stuff. It's all good. We can talk about it. I'm not here to pass the notes or text on the cell phone of all things. We're hearing that in church. You hear it go off and ring. I'm not here for that. I'm here because I want to see the manifestation of the glory of God. That's what I want to see. I want to see God move. I want to see God move. Because, saints, there's something about the glory of God that can do things to you that nothing else can do. Glory. Hallelujah. The glory of God can do stuff that choirs, the preacher, neighbors, friends can't do. Can't do it. This is one of those sermons where you say, God, I just want to see your glory. I want you to be manifest. I want you. Glory. That is what I want. Because too many folks just want to have church and get out as quick as they possibly can. You see them. But they don't want to wait around and stay at the altar unless they've had an encounter with God. Glory. Let the roast burn. Who cares? Glory. I'd rather be in the presence of God. Glory. That's what I want. I want that. The reason why so many people, now listen careful, run from church to church and they join one church this month and two months later they join another church. All the while they tell you, well, God sent me here. Boy, we've got a God that changes his mind all the time. <laughs> Glory. Later they join another church. You know why? It's because they're looking for church. Now listen careful. But their idea a church is all warped is wrong. You know what they're looking for? Their heart to go pitter-patter. Their feet to go patty-pat, you know? They've come to hear somebody tickle their ears. Yeah? They want to wiggle and they want to jerk. They want to clap their hands. They want to shout. But do they want an encounter with God? Somebody asked me one time, they said, I have a hard time hearing God speak to me. What is the problem? I said, you haven't learned to shut up. Serious. I mean, you're talking all the time. He's not going to interrupt you. You know, we get on the phone, we think there's a conversation. Oh, I got some people, my wife said, the other day, Somebody called a man, and he started talking with my wife. 
she finally had to go the little girl's room, so she called me, and I got the phone. She was trying to get away, and I could listen to them all the way down through my house, all 70 feet, still talking, talking. I handed the phone to somebody else, and uh, they finally handed it to one that was looking for her, and they never shut up. I wonder if they ever got their answer. Yeah? This is what happens. You know, we talk so much. Even in our prayers, we talk so much. God never gets to talk. He's waiting for us to hang the phone up where we can listen. Now, they're, they're looking for something like that. But when we get mature, when we're really mature in the Lord, we realize that we've come to see the glory of God. I mean, if you never hear me, if God moves, and you know, we've had services like that where God moves so powerfully, I, he doesn't even let me preach. It's beautiful services because we had a manifestation of God. We had a move with the Spirit of God. I mean, God really moved. You know, that's what I want to see. As a matter of fact, the Bible declares that wherever two or three are there. I'm in the midst with them. Did you ever realize you got the Holy Ghost in you? Did you ever realize you got God the Father in you? I mean, if you're doing what God told you to do, and you got Jesus Christ in you, and you make four. And you make four. Did you get that? I mean, you can enter in the presence of God whenever you want. You can get a manifestation from Almighty God whenever you want. This is, this is what Isaiah did here, and we're just getting here. Glory to God. I hope this is not a two-part one, but <laughs> he was in a corporate worship service. That means they were all there. And he wasn't hanging out with a choir. Nobody was singing to him. But Isaiah, in the year of King Uzziah, the year that he died, when I was all by myself, listen, but because I had set my own atmosphere in the year King Uzziah died, I didn't know what everybody else saw, but I saw the Lord. We sing that song. I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. He was high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Oh, what happened? I mean, death, death is there. Problems are there. I mean, the armies are coming down. There's going to be war. And Isaiah, he said, I didn't even notice all this. Why? I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. Oh, glory. I mean, we think about the last election just a few days, and a lot of people are discouraged. A lot of people are down. Huh. I wasn't. I saw the Lord. I was worshiping. I was praising God because he's in control. Glory. What we see here is the glorious presence of the Lord. Now, we see it through Isaiah's eyes. The Bible declares that when the glory came, that the post started shaking. Not like the false move out of Canada and Florida. Not that kind of shakes. I mean, the shakes, when God comes, that he shakes the things out of you that should be out of you. And he shakes you until he can't shake you anymore. And you can stand on what he can't shake. That's the word of God. I'll tell you, that's when you've been in the presence of God. You see, God tries to shake things up with his glory. So that when you stand before him, the only things that are left are things that could not be shaken. That's when we get to heaven. And we've got to have those things out before we get there. Glory. Our problem is that we try to hold on to too many things. 
shaky things. We want to hang on to them. We don't want to let them go. Glory. If I was to tell you, God hasn't told me to tell you that, throw your televisions all away. Throw your cell phones all away. Throw your computers all away. I mean, you'd really be upset today. But you know, sometimes we might have to do that. If God tells us, if he wants to shake them out because they're taking too much of our time. I, I seen two people <laughs> this past week that I sat there and I heard with my own ears what the doctor told them. And neither one of them did what the doctor told them. One of them went to a different doctor because that doctor had the right words for them. Why? Because that's what they wanted to do. This is why we don't want our experiences sometimes like that with God. He's going to shake us. We're going to have to get rid of some things. And we don't want to get rid of them. We like them. They're enjoyable. Praise God. But God wants to shake them. Glory. He wants to shake them until there's nothing left. He shakes some people away from you in an attempt to remind you that the, that only one that is solid and unshakable is Jesus Christ. Wrong friends, wrong relationships. He shakes some things away from you to attempt to remind you that he's the one that's unshakable. Not you. Glory. And I don't know about you, but I need the glory of God. I'm willing to take the shaking. I'm willing to take the encounters in order to get a revelation of God. And God can only re release that when I'm ready to be changed. That's why we keep saying, sad to say, I do it. Oh, man, I never saw that before in the Bible. Why? I didn't want to see that. Because then I'd have to change. But all at once the Holy Ghost put some light on it. And we have to change. Glory. You know, this text here causes us to change something. Because God doesn't really want us to be textual. You know, he doesn't want us to stay right in the context of the text. Because he can't speak to us. He can't give us a rhema word. He can't. He can give us a written word, but he can't give us a rhema word unless we're open where he can talk to us and he can point something out and he may have to get in a bless me scripture when all the once he says, don't do that. And we hear it. Oh, hey, wow, I didn't know that was there. So God doesn't need that in the conversation in order to have a conversation with us. What he does have, he wants the, the context of that text to drive our relationship to God. Did you get that? He wants to drive our relationship to God. If we're honest, if I took a poll, we'd have to admit that our faith and our relationship with God is more situation driven than it is faith based. Think about it. It's dependent upon the situations all around us. Huh? And if the situations demand it, then we try to get a hold of God. We should always be trying to get a hold of God. We should always be in God's presence. Glory. Now, it doesn't matter what we think. Do you ever realize it doesn't matter for perfect for God to want to talk to us? I mean, he loved us. He gave himself for us. He sent his son to die that you and I could have life. He wants to talk to us. It's through his talking with us. It's through his fellowshipping with us that we get closer to God 
and we let him shake some of that garbage off, that we can walk with God. You know, we might not admit, want to admit that. Yeah. But listen. We claim God is over all of our circumstances. But our attitudes are driven by situations, not faith. I mean, the very things we claim and confess with our mouth, God is bigger than this. We come and say, oh, you've got to pray for me, Pastor. The devil is doing this. I thought God was over that. Our situations drive us when God should be the only person in the whole universe that's able to drive us. Our visions get blurry and we can't see God. We can't see. All we see is the situations. All we see is the problems. Glory to God. I tell you, I'm glad I got a little time left. Listen carefully because there's some things going on in the world that are going to shake you. And if your mind's zeroed in on that, you're not going to be able to see God. Do you know that Israel's at war today? Been at war for quite a few days now. Egypt's ready to get in the war. Syria's talking about getting in the war. And where's the Christian? We're, we're supposed to be praying for Israel, and yet we don't even know what's happening for Israel. Yeah. Because the circumstances aren't driving us that way. Can we be honest? We are sightseeing. Central people. Yeah. We're moved by whatever the circumstances say. If the pain is there, I'm sick. How about having a worship experience and allowing God to drive the sickness or the pain away? Serious. Can we be honest about this? Glory. You know, our feelings and our attitudes become our sight partner with our senses. That's not faith. I know this is kind of a hard message today, but this is a message God gave me. Glory. It messes us up. It twists our senses, you know, our, our, our sight. It causes us to give power to a circumstance as if it is more powerful than God who is over circumstances. Hey, I really, glory. Now, you need to read Isaiah. Now, now look at this. He says, in the year King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord. Now you must understand in the Hebrew, it does not talk about just. And we find that one time, no, no, no. In the whole year, in the whole year, the grammar suggests, in the year he died, after he died, I saw the Lord. Glory. Wow. Must understand, Uzziah had been a, God licking. He had brought Judah to prosperity. Been a king after God's own heart. Brought Judah to a golden age spiritually. But then he was smitten by leprosy and was put out into isolation. <laughs> Forget it. Isolation. Thank you. I forgot the soul in there. And now this lovely godly king of Judah is dead. He's, he, he's dead. They loved him. They loved him. And Isaiah says, in the same year when life got rough, I looked to God. I heard God talk. And I saw God's glory. I mean, if you don't like the election, have you heard God talk? Have you saw God? Have you pressed in to see what's happening? Wow. Oh. Get the picture. Glory. Nothing but tragedy. As I said before, it reveals to me we don't have to have our lives perfect. We should be striving for that. But we need to be in the place that God can talk to us. Period. 
Glory. You're washing the dishes. Got 15 kids screaming. That's Gwen. <laughs> and yet you can still talk to God. You can still hear God. You can still see his presence. Somebody wants to talk on the phone all the time. You can still see God. You can still see his presence. Is anybody there where I am? I mean, do you want to see God? Do you realize that he can speak to you no matter what you're, you're going through? Or, hey, speak to Adam out there on the crowded hockey rink. When somebody just shot a putt and it's going to go in if you don't stop it, he can say, oh, Lord, I'm glad you're here to help me to stop this. Glory. I'll tell you, I've got to do the right posture in spite of my problems. I've got to be in the place that I can speak with God. As a matter of fact, usually... We're not ready to see God. That's the problem. That's the sad part. We're not ready for God until we're in bad circumstances. When everything has gone bad. When there's no other help. Right away we say, God, what's happening here? Glory. Wow. God sees us. God said, it's not that I don't love you. I've got to shake some things out of you. You're never going to make it. Yeah? Do, do we understand this? Do we, do we realize this? Glory. Now, I don't know about you, but the only reason that I made it, as far as I made it today, was because of God. I've got the places where I've been upset. Some people shot the dog, kicked the cat. Jumped the bridge. Got ballistic. Huh? They're not here today. But you and I are here because we saw God. We saw God's glory. He showed us his glory and it stabilized us. Even though everything around us was falling apart. The only reason that we've made it is because of God. We realize that he's over everything we're going through. My emotions, my discouragement, my depression. I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. In the midst of your conflict, you saw God. In the midst of your disappointment, you saw God. In the midst of what you're going through, God showed up. Glory. He said, I'm here. I'm still God. I still speak. And my presence can still be seen. Now, this is a year of tragedy. I think we're headed for one. But I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. Now, listen, because we're getting down to the most important part of this whole message. Because what happened? He says, whoa! Look at it, Isaiah. Whoa! You must understand that in the book of Isaiah, there are six woes. And woe, in the Hebrew language, was a death cry. Was a death cry. Whenever you see woe in the prophetic books, it's a death cry. That's where he was. He saw the Lord. And when he saw the Lord, he saw himself. And when he saw himself, he realized, whoa. Have you ever taken a close look at yourself? I mean, when you get up in the morning and go to the mirror, have you honestly taken a look at yourself spiritually? If you have, you'll cry out, whoa. If you compare yourself with God or compare yourself with Jesus, whoa. I need to change. And the only way we change is by having a true worship time. Glory. I looked at what he was, and I looked what I am not. I looked at his love and looked at my hatred and bitterness. I looked at his compassion. I looked at my deceit. I looked at righteousness, 
and I looked at my wickedness. I looked at his holiness, and I looked at my wretchedness. All I could do was say, woe is me. Woe is me. Can you imagine that? Have you ever been there? I've been there. Yeah. And out of that he says, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Whew. That brought change. That brought encouragement. That brought help. That brought him to the place that he could move into the changes that God had for him. Every time we have those types of worship services, like I said, we don't need a whole group with us. You can do that on your own. It's nice when we got others, but when we have a true worship service, guess what? The Lord's presence shows up. He's high and lifted up, and his train fills the temple, and we say, whoa. Because then we see ourselves. And then he can change us. And then he can make us everything that he wants us to be. He can mold us and shape us and make us glory. Because that's what God wants. Do you want a true worship service then? Glory. I do. If you really do, the altar is open. We'd be more than happy to pray for you. We would. Everybody slips. Sometimes we slip back a little. They used to say you take one step forward and three steps backwards. Well, we can stop that. All we got to do is have a true worship service and see God. And then we'll cry out, whoa. Whoa. And we'll die to self that Jesus Christ becomes Lord. The altar is open. If you like prayer, I want to pray for you. Glory. Hallelujah. The altar is open. You come. And let God minister you. Come. See the Lord. Quiet day today. Hard to 